everyone, uh, I'm Echoes and I'm a VTuber, and I'll be going over Grandizer U episode 4, where we learn a lot about um, uh, Nadia and essentially her motivations and desires. So yeah, um, we'll get started. So in the beginning, we kind of get this sort of montage between her and Duke, where she's essentially like has this uh, little singing part. Where while Duke is uh, accompanying her while playing the guitar, actually quite a nice um, touch overall, and it feels like a bit more intimate though also kind of random. It kind of like starts off right away, so sadly there's no transition into it. But I think the singing part's nice. Her voice is pretty. See that she's in the lake and everything. Very nice aesthetic. She's wearing a pretty dress as well. Oops. Yeah. So yeah, you can see that um, Duke Oro has a really affectionate face for her, which is really cute. And then we kind of get this, um, they talk a bit. I'm trying to get where they talk. Let's see. Um, maybe a bit later. So do you think it's wise to keep him with her? Which is what um, I believe Koji is asking uh, Sayaka right here. Koji right here. And then he, um, and then Sayaka's like, let's see, why is keeping with her? She's one of his childhood friends, you know, we shouldn't worry about it. But then Sayaka's like, what if she's a spy for the Vega Alliance forces, which is a very reasonable question, because she essentially entered their group, um, and is kind of there, which could also be an issue. There's nothing suspicious about her, and also they <laughs> mentioned that there's a lot of drones as, like, observation. And also that the only person who could really blow her cover is someone from her own planet. Um, which makes sense as the only person that would be in this Duke or maybe Casado, but it's mostly Duke uh, in this case. Let's give them some time in private, which is nice. And it's also good that they gave them some space to kind of talk things over since it's pretty sure it's been a while since they last met each other. You can see he, she's here. And she's like, oh, this planet's really beautiful. And then he also, and here he mentions his regrets about, oh, I'm the one who destroyed planet fleet and I killed Rubina, the princess, and he's regretting and everything. And now she's materializing a knife, of course, using uh, from one of her earrings as it's her, one of her weapons. It's like, Naida, your presence here comforts me, but I can't forget what happened. So, so regretting. Having a monologue, your deep um, sense of sadness, and then you see she's hugging him. She always seems to hug him when she's feeling murderous, I guess. But it, I guess it's her way of hiding it and getting close to him, which makes sense in this case. I've been guilty all alone on this planet, carrying a heavy burden, and she she has that knife there. Then she she stops. Because then someone disturbs them. The guardian of the legend of Wolves Island has come. Which is that girl from before on the horse. Uh, she was the one who was dressed as, a, as a, I believe, a shrine maiden before. And then she removes the knife. And they get the opening, which we'll skip. And then we'll go back to the after part after the opening. So, essentially here, um, mentioned how that Wolves Island's far away. Get an introduction to uh, the um, shrine maiden girl. I feel it felt it's very remote because they're pretty far. And essentially what she she's here for, it's just trying to determine if Duke is a good or bad person. Got me island. And then um Nida's like, what's the meaning of the name? And she and he ex essentially explains that he's taking uh, an adopted name uh, to pretend to be the son of Genzo Uman. The mo so much diff uh, trouble if they uh, if they didn't hide his identity, and also it's new for this guy as he's used to living on his own, but now suddenly has an adopted son, which is kind of cute. And he's serving them all tea, which is usually done for guests, which makes sense. Uh, includes chamomile pepper for stress relief. You can see that she has a quite a uh, Nida has quite a warm face here. Oh, space travel tough. You manage to land safely. 
We are surrounded by Vega forces. And then... And now uh, they mentioned Sirius, who is Nida's brother. Who was mentioned in the last episode, so... It's good that he comes back around here. Um, he served the Fleet family for a very long time. A group of Nida and her brother Sirius and the warmth of my family, so... In a way, he was very close friends with them. Back in the day, they were all so happy. And he's like, oh, we're serious. Serious. And then you can see that she has a headache here, where she feels dizzy. Maybe it's like something with her memory being tampered. I don't know. Or something going wrong. But yeah, she's not feeling well. And like, so I guess, oh, maybe it's the tea. Maybe she's just tired. I think it's better she gets some rest. And then um, Duke takes her away so she can get some rest. And then the lady right here is like, he's nothing like the day I met him on the island. And Cody's like, oh, T Daisuke's just very happy. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that um, they look a... Uh, uh, Saika looks a bit skeptical, which is interesting, but yeah. And then this girl right here is like, does that mean that someone else is in his, is in his heart? So it could be... Nida in this case, or would be uh, Rubina as well. But yeah, regardless, uh, he he does have a lot of people he cares about. And then we also get uh, this image of um, Casada, who has his transmitter and is waiting for um, Nida to free him. And, she, and he's tucking her in now. It's like, oh, let me know if you need anything. And she's like, sorry uh, to bother you. He's like, nope, not at all. We're your family, right? Then you can see that she still has that knife with her. And like, oh, I should be thanking you. Um, tomorrow, give me uh, some updates. And then he's like being very like, what do you call it? Um, hospitable in a way or friendly because you can see he's like tucking her in. He's closing the windows. He's trying his best to make her comfortable, which is uh, very nice of him. It also shows he cares a great deal about her well-being. So, of course, then now you can see she gets up. It's like... Oh, why didn't I find the courage to kill him? Maybe um, this could also show her hesitation as well. Before she was trying to kill him. But it's like, oh, I got to execute my mission. She's kind of like thinking about it, And then like she gets this headache because um, we realize something in a bit. So, and then you get to an image of the alien ship. Is, oh, we disturbed, detected a disturbance in Nida's brain waves. Her instructions... For me, Duke Lee must have weakened the impact of brainwashing, which then uh, emphasizes the fact that she is probably under mind control. So, in a way, a lot of this is not her own will as well. And you can see, uh, using the panel, they uh, increased her uh, mind control, um, uh, the mind control ability on her. Because you can see she's screaming, and you can see how that um, her um, circlet is glowing here. It's like, oh, you can see um, the general here is like, oh, you need to execute your mission, which is to kill him. And then she gets a flashback where her um, brother is killed by Grandizer. It's like, and it's probably essentially her main motivation, which makes sense. Is uh, what I kind of inferred last episode as well. That because her brother was killed by Grandizer, is she is going so far in the first place. I have a mission and I must execute it. It's like, oh... Um, and then Koji's, oh, like, what are your plans with her? And then he explains Nida's background, which Nida was the maid of Princess Rubina. So it's such a handmaiden. I'll stand by her side until she is happy and safe. Hope that he's fine. Then you see that she's kind of walking around investigating. And then she uh, goes to talk to Casado. It's like, oh, you have... Become a servant of one of the Starker Knights to meet Duke again. That's why you put up with me treating you like a doll, right? Because you saw before how Casada was essentially hurting her willingly, torturing her to some extent, and she just kind of is just taking it. But yeah. But in a way, she did all this to achieve that goal of meeting Duke again. It's like, oh, now open this door. Of course, I have your orders. But I'll only do that after I kill the Duke. He's like, what? He's like, but I ordered you to come, he you to come here to save me. But then, you, if you remember, that was originally her goal, but then she got uh, interrupted by the generals. So, yeah, two two conflicting goals, sadly. And then she walks away. Oh, 
I get it. Gondal has taken over your mind. And then he mentions here that, dang it, my luck, and I've always left as last choice, but Duke has always been the first for you. And then Sayaka's woken up here. He's like, oh, what time is it? Head to the second floor. Naida is acting kind of suspicious right now. Take your weapon. You see here is kind of playing the guitar um, outside during the night. He's like, oh, I was just admiring the stars. Like, how are you feeling now? Can't do any better. And I see that she takes off her uh, outer clothing to reveal her original uh, handmaiden uh, outfit, which is actually really such a cute outfit. Simple, but it looks nice, right? So it's super cute. And then she has this handkerchief right here that um, will be explained later, which is actually quite important. Then she's next to him again here. It's like, I'm here. And then you can see that she's there to kill him. Which um, is, as mentioned, part of the mind control. Because then, and then she stabs him on the arm, so he's bleeding. And then um, Koji's waking up. Oh, we detected a huge object heading towards planet Earth. What did you just say? They picked it up, and it's like a huge flying saucer. Uh, the monster flying saucer is getting, uh, getting near. It's going to be uh, uh, going to land in Japan and cause a huge bottomless pit which is a very specific way of describing things probably going to be like this huge hole essentially and obviously they want to prevent that from happening so like oh um duke you got to intercept um that flying saucer you got to control um grandizer and then you see they're calling him but he's not responding because he's occupied by nida like answer me and she has the dagger here he's like why and then she's like, answer me. Then why is Sirius dead and you're alive? And he's like, oh my god, Sirius, your brother's dead? What? And then she mentions that he killed him when he ran over him with Grindeiser's foot. So he did kill him if accidentally. And you can see he's mortified right here. It's like, I killed him? His blood's all over his hands. Also killed Miss Rubina. You can change your name. You'll never, um, sorry, you never change the fact you're a criminal who ran away after he betrayed his planet. And then you see Saiga comes and is like, oh, and I had to drop your weapon. And then she quickly disarms her. Disarms Koji here. It's like, no one can stop me from executing my mission. Dun, dun, dun. Kind of feels like a bit like a Terminator move, but, uh, well. And she's hugging here. It's like, where will you escape from your sins if you stay alive? And now she uh, materializes a second weapon, the spare from all the pain, using the proton bomb, which is her second weapon. In a way, it's kind of amazing that she has two, two earrings full of incredibly dangerous weapons. It's like, oh my god, you have a bomb? It's like, calm down, I'll stay with you until the end. He's bleeding. And I didn't make a move yet. You're not posing any danger. His commander's not on board, which... A logical move, not gonna lie. So thanks to Commander Grant Gondos, amazing ability to brainwash creatures. Sadly, Nine does not acting completely like herself. When Duke Flynn Equation makes things easier, such a genius plan. Blow up the entire planet with their flying saucer, Dari Dari, which is an extremely cheesy name, but yeah. Go kill herself with Fleet eventually, fulfilling her wish. So maybe, in a way, they're kind of maybe the brainwashing is strengthened. Possibly because of the fact that um, Nida may have wanted this to some extent as revenge. Remember that the poor, and then this guy's like, remember that the poor, Nekasan's gonna die with them. I feel wanna cry, which is just a villain line, I guess. Countdown here. Like, and then uh, Duke is like, forgive me, you're right. My hands are stained with blood. I will tone. And until I atone for the sins I committed, killing myself won't save me. Which makes sense, because in a way, he has to act, right? If he's dead, he can't do anything anymore. Um, I won't be merciful by dying, and that's why. Let me live. Killing me out of revenge will not satisfy Sirius in his grave. You can see he's like, bring her closer. It's like, 
like a tragic lover's kind of look. And it's like, let us live, Nida. Let's find a way to live here. And it's like, your highness. And then you see that she has that headache again. Because of the mind control. Girl, This girl's unable to control her actions. Someone's controlling her, which I guess this uh, girl has incredible insight. It's like, what did you say? Your Highness, the Vega Alliance forces. Let's see. A bunch of scumbags. Leave Nida alone. You can see he's like, oh my god, she's being controlled. And then you see that she's about to use that bomb. But um, because he's been kind of like, it's going to be okay. And then you can see that she eventually snaps out of it. Because um, you see that she gets this flashback, which is actually quite important in this case. When she's a kid and she's like crying or younger. And then you see him. And then she had a cut on her arm, which is why she was crying before. And he gave her a handkerchief to help uh, stop the bleeding. And you see he's hugging her as well as a way of comforting her. Like in the moment just earlier. And because of it, you see that the gem on the top of her forehead cracks. And then you also remember where he was confessing his love to Rubina, most likely. And then he's like, and then her, his, her brother's like, are you sure, sister? And she's kind of watching. You see that handkerchief on her arm still here. Which obviously implies that she loves him. Because why else would her brother tell her, like, why... Are you not confessing your love to him? Like, are you sure? It's like, Nida, answer me. Duke fleed. And then you can see that she finally gained uh, control of herself because the gem broke and everything. She actually broke um, the mind control. Then he collapses because he's, you know, bleeding. Because she, uh... End up stabbing him a second time, which I didn't mention before. <laughs> Oops. I think I skipped over back. So anyway, but she stabbed him twice. Once on the arm and once on the um this on this chest area. You can see that she's using a handkerchief she had a hat on hand. It's the um pretty sure it's that same one she uh, he used to save her originally. He, uh same one he used to help her when she was younger. But you see it's covered in blood now. It's like and she's like, How how could I do this? And then you see that the headquarters is surrounded with the energy shield to try to protect themselves. You gotta evacuate, blah, blah, blah. And then she has all Sasha head to the bunker. And then she's like determined now. She knows what to do. And it's like, uh, Duke, please forgive me. And she's heading out. You see that her face is uh, extremely beautiful now. You can see that she's finally doing what she wanted to do. And they don't stop her. And then you can see that she uses that aircraft that she came in before. And leaves to confront them. It's like, goodbye, Duke. Please forgive me. And then you see Duke uh, comes in on the comms. It's like, Nida. And it's like, oh, you're okay. Thank God. You're still alive. And then she mentions that Rubina is still alive. What she needed to know. And that's why you should stay alive. And she has that uh, bomb, which is the second earring. And live together happily. And then she essentially, um, I will, I will sacrifice my life for you. So in a way, she has this final smile. It's like, in a way, it's interesting. They always show this, like, her uh, lips right before she does something, which is interesting. Maybe just like a visual, interesting visual, I guess. And then she blows herself up um, using that photon bomb she had. And it's like... Nida, no, sort of thing. In a way, she kind of saved them all. It's a uh, rather sad first death, um, confirmed death, even though we only knew her for like an episode. But yeah, and then the ending also changed too, which is a nice touch. They actually, I think, they upgrade her song here because you have these memories of her and uh, Duke Fleet. Right here, um, which is rather sweet. And then also of their childhood. I think this other girl's gonna co come up soon. And then you have him with Rubina. And then her kind of 
like being sad but beautiful at the same time so because uh, she's represented by these flowers here and in a way he kind of is um like remembering it because it's kind of like his hands like close to his heart i think i don't think he's throwing them and then you see that ship and then those flowers so in a way he he's promising to not forget what she did for him so yeah that's essentially it um overall it's a pretty interesting episode like i was like 99 percent sure that nida was going to kill him she was really close not gonna lie she stabbed him twice uh, under mind control but in, in a way, I guess her love for him really overpowered everything else, so. I'm glad that that had a nicer ending than expected, but still sad, of course, because she is now dead. But regardless, I think it was a, it was a good arc, because she kind of... I feel like she learned a lot. He was able to... What snapped her out was essentially their conversation each, with each other. It's like, essentially, he's like, instead of dying together, I want to live with... live together. And that, I think, was, it's not like a love confession, but it's close enough where she was like, okay, this is the man that I've always loved. I want to save him. Um, and that's what she, exactly what she did, rather in, after breaking free of the mind control. So, so in a way, I'm glad that that was the case, because uh, otherwise, uh, the uh, planet Earth would have been very much uh, in a bad state, especially Japan, would have had a whole crater in the middle, so... Very much, uh, very good last minute intervention from her. But yeah, it was, it was rather sweet, um, if sad, so bittersweet. Um, but overall, a good episode. Thought we uh, learned quite a bit about um, her backstory and everything. I don't think we learned too much about the plot, sadly, outside of that they can control people, which could be important. Oh yeah, and uh, also one more thing I thought was interesting, I forgot to mention. Was that they uh, mentioned the teaser for the next episode, Maria's arrival. And she's actually one of the people in the opening. I think it's that brown hair girl. The other brown hair girl, I think. Or someone else. But regardless, we'll probably have another girl come in who knows of Duke in going in for revenge or not. But yeah, sadly, because Nida passes is, you know, passed passed away, she was never in the opening. Um, so she probably is not part of the final squad. But in this case, maybe this Maria girl, I remember her name from the opening. So she probably will Maybe stay alive a little longer, we'll see. But yeah, overall, a lot of, uh, some good developments. Um, Casado's also not saved. And in a way, Nida also, even though she, you know, passed away to save Duke and everyone, she also freed herself from the torture, which I think was also good for her, essentially, because that was awful seeing it. Um, but yeah, overall, a good episode, and looking forward to upcoming ones we'll probably learn about the other people who are in the opening which will be good we we'll learn more about the aliens eventually Casat why about casado and more about grandizer i don't know we'll learn more but we'll give it some time and we'll figure out stuff eventually so yeah anyway um thank you so much and have a good rest of your day hope you enjoyed uh hearing me talk